meetings with your countries. And I know that uh, one who would like to have been here right now is Commissioner Hahn. But uh, unfortunately, and that shows just how, how eager we are on both sides to see this moving forward. We could not fit this with his agenda. He's in New York at the General Assembly. But I know he's coming, he's coming tomorrow to, uh, to be able to address you as well uh, at, this, at this event. Uh, now, when uh, the Council took its decision in, in June, it, uh, it opened the path towards negotiations. And I think that was very clearly a recognition of the efforts you have both made on your respective reform agenda. And the process which we are embarking on together today is an important step on your road to the EU. We are beginning the most intensive engagement in our already long relationship. And between now and September next year, our experts will explain the entire length and breadth of the acquis communautaire, the EU rules, the EU legislation, which is now over 160,000 pages. When I did this in 1993 and 1994, it was, I think, Mark, 60,000. 60, so it shows that the EU is moving forward as well. Uh, and we will have over, I think, 70 days of meetings uh, like the one today for that purpose. And we will later in the process check your implementation. But that is, as I say, the next step. This week's meeting and the meetings ahead of us might be and will be exhausting. They will be long. But, and they can, you can sense, perhaps, that from time to time, bureaucratic, but they are not bureaucratic. They are essential. There must be common understanding what the EU rules and legislation is about. And it is about helping you to prepare for the future membership. Based on the reforms which uh, the legislation will require of you uh, and your population want. Uh, and it will allow you to make a full assessment of where you stand and what you still need to do. And today we start with Chapter 23, the rule of law. And this is fundamental. It fundamentals first, something we have discussed throughout the period for quite a couple of years. Uh, and this is something we do in all negotiations, starting with Chapter 23. But in your case, this is also the area on which uh, the member states in June, and us as well, are specifically looking for progress. Uh, so we can see what is happening from now until uh, the very important meeting uh, that's going to happen in the Council in June. And I'm very honoured to have here the Ministers of Justice, uh, who are in charge of implementing a large part of these reforms. Uh, as I've said to some of you before, uh, my strong advice is to very much seize this uh, opportunity and use the time well. And we are here ready to give you advice on when you have question marks on, on what that would imply. Uh, you have come part of the way, but there is still a lot to do. And we can see that from the regular reports and the dialogues that we're having together. And our explanation of the acquis and the motivation provided by this process should be the impetus to help you to consolidate over the coming months uh, the achievements so far and make the necessary additional progress, and which would allow us on our side here to report real tangible progress in next year's enlargement package, which will then encourage Council to move forward with the necessary decisions uh, next summer to open negotiations with you. Today is a start, a new dynamic in our relations. We will follow up with uh, explanations of all the other chapters of the EU acquis, from the rule of law, which we are looking at today, to the environment, consumer protection, agriculture, transport, food safety, 
the laws that affect business, the laws that affect uh, the various areas of uh, activity in your countries, but primarily laws that affect citizens for the benefit of citizens and for creating an even better environment and better prospect for prosperity. And I look forward to hearing about and seeing progress during my future visits to your countries. And I would like to finally wish you two very fruitful and busy days of hard work. Thank you. Thank you very much for you arrived, but I would like to pass the floor to uh, the Deputy Prime Minister Osmani. Uh... Thank you, dear Director General Danielson, Director Calavera, dear Coordinator Jorna, dear colleagues, uh, representatives of the European Commission services and delegations from both countries. It is my honor and privilege in a capacity as a Deputy Prime Minister for European Affairs, but also as a Chief Political Accession Negotiator to be here today in Brussels on this historical occasion for my country to mark the start of the screening process with the explanatory meeting for Chapter 23, Judiciary and Fundamental Right. We have been expecting this moment for more than 15 years, signing the SAA in 2001, applying for membership in 2004, becoming candidate country in 2005, getting the first recommendation to start accession negotiations in 2009, and then eight consecutive positive recommendations until 2018. And it is our strong belief that today we are entering our final phase before full membership. But we are aware that it will not happen tomorrow. It will take longer, and it will depend mostly on us, on our political will and also administrative capacity. Our Euro-Atlantic orientation and aspiration for NATO and EU membership was clear and vocal since we declared our independence. Processes that everyone agrees that are complex, long-lasting and very demanding. Processes that have neither begun with us nor will end with us. These are strategic interests of the states that we convey to each other and we continue where the others have stopped. This government took over the office in very difficult circumstances, but with dedicated work and commitment and with the assistance of all our neighbors and international community, we have managed to deliver results in two trajectories. One, by implementing the internal reforms and by bringing to closure the open bilateral issues, first with Bulgaria, and then with Greece. The achieved results were recognized by the European Commission in the enlargement package and positive country report and confirmed by all member states in the Council conclusion which set clear path for setting date for start of negotiation in June next year. I also have to express my sincere appreciation to the European Commission for their proactive approach following the June Council conclusion and proceeding with the preparation for the first phase of the negotiation process, the screening, which brought us all together today on the start of the explanatory screening with the presentation of the Chapter 23. We understand that this is just the start of a complex process of several phases, dealing with thousands of pages of the EU acquis, as you have mentioned, including technical standards which need to be transposed into a national legal system, while at the same time ensuring that the institution have the capacity, knowledge, equipment and resources to implement them in proper manner. But let me assure you that no matter how big this challenge is, there is a huge level of enthusiasm and motivation among the administration and positive energy in the society around the EU integration. Our existing long-lasting structures have accumulated experience and will be the core of the negotiating structure that will convey the process supported with civil society, academic community, business community and social partners and other key experts that will be involved in the screening process. As for the start of, the, of this process with the Chapter 23, let me assure you that we have full respect for your principle, fundamental first, 
and we can promise that we will work closely with you to meet all requirements, to implement all obligations, and to introduce all European standards into our society. It goes without saying that a part of 23 and 24 chapters, we will work hard on all chapters with equal respect and seriousness, simply because they all matter. Simply because implementing the EU standards, rules and values is what this process is all about. In a specific situation, with explanatory screening already on the calendar, but bilateral screening that will come just next fall, we need to find mechanisms and channels to keep the focus of the administration on the process. We need to use the SAA bodies, peer review missions, to have more frequent meetings between our experts and the experts from line DGs who will help us to guide in having proper transposition of the EU acquis. In this way, we will ensure that the time between now and June next year is used in the best possible way, and once we have the first intergovernmental conference, we will be able to continue with the regular phases, bilateral screening, where the member states and various council bodies will also be involved. Finally, it is equally important to have your assistance through the EU funds. We will use to the extent possible the instruments such as twinning and TIEX. We will also make efforts to use the current EPA funds by 2020, but we also count on the assistance within the new EPA perspective in support of the reforms. Ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude by underlining that we are ahead of a very sensitive, intensive and complex period when the government and the entire society will have to deal with many parallel processes. Implementation of the bilateral agreement with Greece, strengthening good neighbourly relations, at the same time, continuing with the reforms and going through technical part of the screening, preparing for the accession negotiations. We must build our portfolio until June 2019, when we expect the Council of EU to confirm the start of negotiations. Therefore, we need as far to work in close partnership with you, the European Commission and the EU delegation, especially in terms of building wider national consensus on the EU integration and bringing the opposition on board. And let me just underline that this is an opportunity that we cannot afford to miss. It is our responsibility to ensure that the process will move into the right uh, direction. Thank you very much. But, uh, before passing the floor, if I can just uh, pass the floor to the Minister of Justice to add to my remarks. Dear Director General Danielson, dear Director Calavera, Screening Coordinator Jorna, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to address you on this event at on the beginning on the screening process of the Republic of Macedonia with explanatory meeting for Chapter 23. The delegation from our country came here ready to put the efforts in the process of screening and after that in the process of negotiation because we see these efforts as an investment in peace, prosperity, stability and security, as an investment in development of democracy and protection of human rights, as an investment in safe and prosperous future of the Republic of Macedonia. Respect of human rights, independent judiciary, rule of law and democracy are not only requirements that should be met in the accession of EU. They are also strategic goals of the government of the Republic of Macedonia. They are our firm and unquestionable objectives, which are reaffirmed in our governmental program and in the plans for reform. <coughs> Plan 369 and Plans 18 that were adopted by the Government of the Republic of Macedonia. We are aware that there will be many challenges in the process of reforms in the area covered by Chapters 23 and 24. We are aware that the rule of law means not only adoption of the legislation in line with the EU legislation. Its consistent implementation is bigger challenge. In the area covered by chapters 23 and 24, democracy is at stake, and that is not the area where only few measures can be implemented. Democracy and rule of law, we are aware, needs and require sustainable solutions. 
Sometimes maybe we will not be sure whether we are doing enough in these processes. But we are not going to leave any space for doubts whether we have political will for the reforms, for fight against corruption and crime, for protection of human rights, for strengthening independence of the judiciary, for replacing the rule of law with rule of uh, the rule of man with rule of law. The Commissioner Khan in one occasion said that the rule of law is not an instant coffee. And he's completely right on that. Aware of that and aware that the actual process of preparing for EU membership is as important as the final goal, we will focus on quality of the reforms in order to come up with solution based primary on tangible results. Now let me say several words in Macedonian, because Macedonian language, because uh, we are aware that after these processes that are going in Macedonia, Macedonian language will have also guarantees in the international communication, so let me use that right even now. With Minatiot period, Republic of Macedonia... In the last period, the Republic of Macedonia has undergone a serious ordeal. The involvement of representatives of the European Union and the application of principles and values of the European Union have been greatly instrumental in overcoming the political crisis in the Republic of Macedonia and have contributed to attaining significant changes in our society. The start of the screening process is of special importance Macedonia. Фокусот на прашањата од областа на правдата, човековите права, борбата против корупцијата на самиот почеток на овој процес ќе помогне да се забрза динамиката на реформите во овие области и на најдобар начин ќе придонесе за консолидирање на Република Македонија како земја со стабилна, модерна демократија која ги имплементира европските вредности и во која владее правото. Денес Република Македонија во позитивна смисла е поинаква земја од што беше пред една година. И јас сум сигурна дека ќе биде уште подобра за една година. На тој процес подготвени сме за партнерство со Европската унија, бидејќи друга алтернатива освен членство во Европската унија Република Македонија нема. Благодарам. Could I pass the floor to the Albanian Minister for Justice, Mrs. Kjornar? Uh, dear Mr. Danielson, dear Ms. Calavera, dear Mr. Deputy Prime Minister Osmane, dear colleagues, it is an honor to chair the Albanian delegation today in this meeting that marks the beginning of the technical work in a major process for the future of Albania. The government of Albania sees this process as a journey of transformation and a possibility to undertake critical reforms that will ultimately make Albania part of a joint European family. I thank the European Commission for engaging with the start of the screening process. The June Council decision made possible for the Commission and for Albania to immediately start with the preparations for the officials' opening of accession negotiations. The start of screening procedures gives a new impetus to this process. Inviting Albania to take part in this table will increase pressure to further reforms and increase accountability in the implementation of these reforms. Under the guidance of these processes, the government will be in an even better position to drive the reform process at home and the European Commission will have more leverage over our reform processes legally and politically. Therefore, 
as a first step, the familiarization with EU legislation will make the criteria that need to be fulfilled clearer and more concrete. In future steps, the preparation of action plans based on screening and the benchmarks will positively affect further progress of reforms in our country. The explanatory meetings with the Commission will help us mo uh, to move forward in this process in a more structured manner. This is particularly true in relation to the Chapter 23, which covers the key areas of justice and fundamental rights. As the Minister of Justice, I am pleased <laughs> to state that our deep and comprehensive reform in the justice system has marked a new beginning in the reform process as a whole, particularly in the areas of the fight against corruption and strengthening the fundamental rights. We have undertaken one of the most comprehensive justice reform in the Western Balkan countries, unprecedented and unparalleled in our efforts to give to our citizens an independent, accountable, and impartial justice system. The process is Albania-owned, but conducted with strong political support from the EU and USA, with technical assistance from EU-funded projects. Aiming to restore proper functioning of the rule of law, the independence of the ju judicial system, as well as to re-establish the public trust and confidence in these institutions, Albania put in place a transitory vetting system for all judges, including judges of the Constitutional Court and High Court, for all prosecutors, including the Prosecutor General, the Chief Inspector and the other inspectors of the High Council of Justice. We have also enshrined in our Constitution the International Monitoring Operation, IMO, which is a body constituted by judges and prosecutors from EU member states and North America to closely monitor and assist in this process. Through the budget support and the IMO project, the EU is playing an outstanding role in the implementation of justice reform. The Parliament and the Albanian government being committed to successful implementation of the reform have not only created the necessary institutional, constitutional and legal corpus, but even uh, is providing the necessary infrastructure, human resources and financial support for the proper implementation of the justice system. The government has provided budgetary technical and infrastructural resources to the vetting institutions and to the establishment of the new justice institutions. Members of the vetting institutions are paid 50% more than judges of the Constitutional Court and High Court. Additionally, starting from 1st January next year, the salaries of judges and prosecutors will nearly double and will be one of the most highly paid uh, public officials in Albania. All these efforts have produced satisfactory results so far. The vetting process, which is a prerequisite of establishing the new justice institution, is progressing well. The Independent Qualification Commission, IQC, has delivered 62 decisions. Around 41 judges and prosecutors, including judges in the Constitutional Court, High Court and General Prosecutor have left the justice system. IMO judges are following and supporting all procedures of the vetting process. This creates a sound basis for a timely establishment of the new institution of the justice system. High Judicial Council, High Prosecutor Council and special anti-corruption structure. As it pertains to the executive, all necessary measures are being taken, taken to guarantee the function of the new institutions as soon as progress in the vetting process allow for their establishment. 
Council of Ministers' decisions are being drafted for the initial budget for the Special Anti-Corruption SPAC and other by laws necessary for proper implementation of justice uh, reform. The judicial reform is opening a new phase of inten intensification of the fight against corruption and organized crime in Albania. The positive trends towards a solid track records of investigations, prosecutions and convictions in corruption and organized crime is being further strengthened. A solid track record remains our objective, but the results we have achieved create a sound basis to consolidate further progress and the establishment of the new institution, such as SPAC, that aims exactly at this consolidation. The reform path is not easy, as the resistance to the justice reform clearly shows, but our determination remains unwavering. It should be clear, we did, no, we did not undertake this reform such as an only homework given by Brussels. This reform is the future of our country. It's vital for its economic and democratic development. On the other hand, these reforms show the strength of our countries to reach the accession standards and continue the European path. The implementation of justice reform is an important phase at this stage and needs the support of European Commission. That is vital. I am very pleased that the EU will accompany us on this reform path. We need this report, this support, and we need to work closely together in an effective and productive manner. We are determined to strengthen and intensify the efforts in order to advance our EU-related reform agenda and deliver further tangible and a sustainable result. Concluding, I want to thank you for the big efforts that you have done for us, the encouragement that you and your colleagues have transmitted to us by supporting Albania in the path of transformation to a market economy and a rule of law state. Thank you for the possibility of addressing uh, this meeting and I hope that we will have fruitful, fruitful discussion in these two days. Thank you.